Sasha started swimming when she was about nine years old. She loved swimming and everything she was doing, it was always goal-oriented. She, she decided that she was going to be good at it and she was really good at it. She decided it was an opportunity for her to go to the uh, National Swimming Centre in Montreal and she was, uh, uh, she was 15 at the time. She had her first suicide attempt in the spring. And at that point, we went to seek help. We did try to seek help earlier, like a sports psychologist and a psychologist, and they were saying, oh, just go shopping with your kid and just try to do things with them. And when she came back here as well, she continued and she was an Olympic hopeful. And uh, she was uh, selected by Missouri to go to university there um, on a scholarship for swimming. And she loved it there. First semester, she had a 4.0 average. If you look at Sasha briefly, you thought that this girl had everything for herself. And my mom was always worried about her. She was texting her every single day, always had to know everything, where she was, where she was going, because she was worried that my sister wouldn't be doing well again or she would try again, because you always have that fear in the back of your mind. And that year, she had a back injury. She also had roommates that she had a lot of trouble with. And then she had a car accident. Someone bumped her from the back. And then the last straw was that her boyfriend broke up with her. So that was really tough on her. And it, it was kind of just, it was just the perfect storm as my mother describes it. And she was admitted on uh, to a psych ward there. She was diagnosed on the spot on entrance with borderline personality disorder. So we called Boston McLean they actually had a, a room, a bed for her. After the initial 28 days, she was allowed to go out for lunch. And she actually went to the pharmacy and got Tylenol, 100 extra strength Tylenol. That was the Monday, the Monday night that she took the pills and she passed away on the, on the Friday. She was, her, she was pronounced brain dead. Sasha passed away on June 17, 2011. And for me, when I think of it, it says if it was yesterday. There's not one moment I don't think about her. If you see that your child is having difficulty on a daily basis, it's more than teenage angst. You need to seek help. That's, I think, the biggest mistake is trying to tell someone what to do or tell someone how to be better because they, they are who they are and they can't, they can't change who they are. They can just try to better themselves, but that has to come from, from them. I would say probably the Number one thing that we've learned is validation before problem solving. It's too easy, the parents and all these people that with the best intentions, it's too easy to just be in pain ourselves from seeing that person in pain and trying to give them all kinds of good advice on how to get out of it. And as a friend or a family member, if you see your loved ones struggling, be there for them. Listen to them. Do not judge them. And encourage them to seek help. It can make a big difference. And let's all work together to remove the stigma surrounding mental health and make it a better world. Thank you for watching this powerful video about teenage suicide. I have two colleagues to help us discuss your concerns about about this film, Dr. Steve Schlossman and Dr. Blaise Aguirre, who actually took care of Sasha and the, at, at the end of her life. Yeah. So, um, Blaise, um, how, how worried should parents be when a teenager tries to hurt herself? Uh, parents should be really worried. I think that not dealing with it in the moment can just make the situation a lot worse. And, and, and kids who are trying to hurt themselves ultimately can uh, end up taking it to the next step, which is teenage suicide. But some of it is just getting attention. I mean, some, some kids will try to hurt themselves just to kind of like cry for help. And you how see, do we know the difference? You know what, and that's a great, great uh, uh, fantasy, fallacy uh, that parents have. It turns out that about f only 5% of any uh, attempts to hurt themselves are cries for help or attention seeking. The vast majority are not. So uh, when, when professionals and other people say, oh, it's just a cry for help, it, it really isn't. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. It's, we do hear this a lot. We hear yeah. this from emergency room doctors. We hear this from parents. We hear this yeah. from other kinds of physicians. 
Let's talk for a second about Sasha. She had borderline personality disorder, right. and we often will hear that associated with the cry for help. And yeah. as you pointed out, there's a fallacy to that. Can you tell us what borderline personality disorder is? Yeah, it, it's a condition that uh, people who have it have a very difficult time regulating their emotions. That means controlling their emotions. Uh, you know, like a, like a young child has a difficult time and learns over time. But this persists into adolescence and adulthood, and also a difficult time regulating relationships. But generally, it's the relationships that are most important to them. It's not any relationship. It's not any emotion. But in intense emotional states and intense relationships, very difficult time controlling them. So it can get rapidly very angry, or rapidly very sad, or disgusted, or ashamed, and then rapidly come back to normal. So it's very confusing for parents and for people who struggle with well, it. You know, I got to say, as a parent, yeah. and also as a child psychiatrist, that issue of that sort of rapid anger, or that, that's so consistent with what kids do anyhow. Yeah. So we look at Sasha, who, who had you know, a breakup in a relationship, didn't make a sports team, all, all of these things. How do we tease those apart from the kids who are really in trouble? Well, but, but the difference was with her is that she, um, she'd made a suicide attempt, that she was self-injuring, that she was beginning to have all these really negative thoughts. And, and making that distinction is really important, but you need a very in-depth uh, conversation with her to have this discussion. So parents actually saw a history of, of, of her suicide attempts in the past, and they sought help. But I'm wondering, um, what can parents do to get help? I mean, oftentimes there's a resistance to seek help. And they said that, that you know, parents should not resist. They should continue to seek help. Yeah, so help comes on at, at different levels. And we all, we all know this. I mean, there's the help that the parents directly give to the kid by validating them, by um, feeling that, that you know, have the kid knows they can be trusted. But then there's all of the hoops you have to jump through to get um, mental health care, especially in this country. The, the insurance barriers, um, the barriers to just finding someone available. I mean, Blaze, you can speak to this. Well, that's, that's, the difficult, that's one of the difficult things that happens is that um, a lot of therapists don't want to deal with anyone who's suicidal. They say, well, I don't deal with that. I don't help that. And ultimately, it's the mental health issue of our time. Well, unfortunately, mental health and mental mental health problems are highly stigmatized, we need to do a lot more to kind of um, appreciate that one in four uh, uh, has a mental health problem. So we heard that validation is really important. The parents said that that was the single most important thing for them. Um, how can parents validate their kids and why is it so, why is it so important? Yeah, well I think, I think that the the idea of validation is important, but to understand it through the context of invalidation. So invalidation powerfully tells the child that either their problems aren't real or that their problems are easy to solve. So if you think about a child who doesn't know how to ride the bicycle, uh, you could say, well, it's an easy thing to do, but if he doesn't know how to ride the bicycle, he doesn't know how to ride the bicycle. Um, or to say, well, you know, any child can ride a bicycle. So, so especially with fear and with anger and, and, and intense emotions, you know, for instance, a, a, a young lady has a, a, a druggy boyfriend now, and she breaks up with him, and the father says, oh, that's great, you know, he was a useless guy. But for her, it was a very important relationship. So validation just says, I recognize that what you went through was real, that you have validity to your point. Even though I'm glad that this happened, it still it was important to you. So, so it's, it's, it's a recognition that they yeah. have truth in their position. It's acknowledging their emotional state. It's acknowledging that this is where they are right then, and they have to deal with something that is, 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 a, is a true experience for, for their kid, no matter how they value it themselves. And that even though it's easy for you to solve the problem, that it might not be easy for me to solve yeah. the problem. So both of those are really important components. It's the core of empathy. It's the core, it's of, the empathy. core of empathy. Yeah. Right. So I hope this uh, film and this discussion has helped uh, increase your awareness of the problems. If you have any other questions, please come to the website and get some more information. Thanks for watching.